This is not realistic. This is not realistic. Matter of fact, this whole game isn't realistic at all. What were you thinking, Gearbox? It's like you weren't even trying. Have you seen Battlefield 1? But there might be one thing you got right. And I'm not talking about how hard platforming is in an FPS. Tina, I'm pretty sure this jump is impossible. No, this is something you wouldn't expect me to say at all. Unless you read the title of this video. Uh, I'm talking about the Infinity Pistol, the legendary Vladoff gun known across the Borderlands wiki for its somewhat unique attribute of never consuming a single ammo. Not one. But Mystery might be saying, how is this realistic? Infinity isn't exactly achievable. Let's take a look. This guy managed 600 rounds, which is impressive and all, but not very close to Infinity. This guy got to 1000 with a belt-fed machine gun, but we won't be able to use this method since the Infinity Pistol isn't belt-fed. Of course, many guns can go even further, shooting well over a continuous 6000 rounds. Still, that's not even close. After a while, all guns currently out there will seize up or melt after enough fire. An AK will go about 895 rounds with pauses for reloads before seizing up, and that's well after it's caught on fire. We're gonna need to think up something completely new to shoot indefinitely. So yes, you're right, Infinity is not achievable both for guns and for really anything outside theoretical mathematics. The universe might be infinite, might not, but we don't have the capability to ever find out, let alone achieve Infinity. So how do we go about proving that a real Infinity Pistol is, well realistic, sort of, to an extent. And what technology will we need to get there? Oh boy, the possibilities. First, let's get into the specifics of the Borderlands 2 Infinity Pistol and how that works. The Infinity Pistol, like the Dove I briefly showed earlier, is most likely a reference to action movies, where a running trope is that characters never seem to have to reload and have as many bullets as they need, at least until the plot demands differently. In the game, the Infinity Pistol's seemingly physics-breaking properties are never explained. Let's go over what we do know. The pistol uses regular pistol ammo, as seen purely from the fact that it's in the same category that all the other pistols are in and they share the same ammo pool. When you fire at a wall, you can see that some kind of fiery projectile comes out of the barrel and exerts force on the wall, leaving a bullet mark and even moving objects in dirt. You also notice the limniscatic shape of the recoil, we'll get back to that later. This is clearly the work of matter. Purely energy-based force, like a laser, would not be acting like this because light exerts very little momentum, and most obviously the projectiles are not traveling at the speed of light. This pistol is shooting out matter, but just never has to reload its one bullet in the chamber, so the bullet is duplicated in some way before the next one needs to be fired. Since the bullets we fire don't seem to ever come back to the gun like a retracting hook or something, we'll have to conclude that another completely different bullet is fired each time. Given that there isn't some dude coming back to give us new bullets, and you never have to reload or even touch anything but the trigger, we come to some pretty big problems, one of which we can ignore with a little logic. That is the fact that it would be impossible for a gun to shoot forever because 1. the gun will eventually fall apart, and 2. the universe will end. We can ignore this problem because we can assume that, like all things, the manufacturers were stretching the truth a little bit. Does infinity continue if no one's there to see it? I don't think so. The gun doesn't actually shoot forever, it just never has to reload until it falls apart. So how long is that? Based on the fact that you can seemingly shoot forever in the game, I even left the game running overnight to make sure Gearbox wasn't pulling a prank on us, which is what you see in the corner, the pistol will last at least until no one's playing Borderlands 2 at all, and never will again. That is when it is truly dead. This will probably occur within a thousand years. I mean, just look at how humanity and its technology have evolved within the past thousand years. Do you really think it would be possible to get on Steam in 3017? I don't think so. So let's just say that the Infinity Pistol is going to fall apart in a thousand years. This is infinitely far away from Vladoff's claim, but I think it's more than fair. Most guns fall apart within 15 years just by firing 500 rounds a month. This thing, if you do the math with a fire rate in game of 8, which is about average for it, will continuously be shooting 21 million bullets per month which means a real-world pistol doing that kind of shooting would fall apart well within a day. So yeah, I think a thousand years is pretty generous for a real-world analog. Within that thousand years, it will have shot 2.52 times 10 to the 11 bullets. That's 252 billion. A pretty big pistol bullet is 16 grams, so that means it shoots 4 trillion 32 billion grams. 
The earth has about 1.1 times 10 to the 25 grams of metals that can be used to make bullets with in its crust, so you wouldn't have to worry about using up all the material available in the world, at least for another 2.72 times 10 to the 15 years. All those bullets would get expensive. Using a comparison of 9mm rounds, they would cost me $38 billion plus tax. And as per the law of supply and demand, the more you shot up, using most of the bullets of that type in the area, they'd probably even get more expensive. You might not run out, but it'll cost you. The real problem is that the infinity pistol never has to be reloaded, so you wouldn't be able to get the bullets in there in the first place, unless they just magically teleport in there. But that's not really ever going to be possible, let's just be real here. We might one day develop portal devices, but they will either be atomically small or extremely large and chaotic. That's just the nature of the only real leads we have in the field, quantum tunneling and wormholes. So what could we use to get another bullet in there without touching it? Magnets won't work because to be that strong they'd be sucking in all kinds of junk. But what about the stuff that's all around the pistol all the time? That's right, I'm talking about the atmosphere. Pandora's atmosphere is never really detailed. We can gather that it's habitable for humans, since, well, humans live there. So let's just assume that it's like the Earth's atmosphere. The largest chunk here is nitrogen, so that would seem like the best candidate to focus on. But oxygen isn't bad either. It's just that it's extremely flammable, so having it concentrated in a gun just doesn't seem smart. Nitrogen's freezing point is 63 Kelvin, which is gratefully above oxygen's 54.36 Kelvin. If you aren't familiar with Kelvin, he's a pretty cool dude. Okay, so we've settled on making solid nitrogen as a source for bullets, since any other source would just be too improbable. Solid nitrogen makes a lot of sense actually. Here's what we need to do. Suck in air into the gun, using an area of low pressure. Fluids like nitrogen will naturally flow from high to low pressure. Unlike big companies that make liquid and solid nitrogen for labs and other mad scientific machinations, the nitrogen doesn't have to be very pure at all. We can allow as much oxygen as we want in there, but it'll always be a pretty small percentage. Once we have the air inside, it has to be deposited, that is, it has to go through deposition, a phase change from gas to solid. The solid air maker will have to take a few different stages to make sure we always have a new bullet available, but it'll still have to be working very fast. As this is happening very quickly, fractions of a second, at very low temperatures inside the gun, more and more air has to be coming in. We need all this air because the density of nitrogen in gas form at standard conditions is 1.25 grams per liter. Solid nitrogen has a density of 1026.5 grams per liter, so as it freezes, it's getting squished really tight, relatively speaking. Solid nitrogen has a density just greater than water ice, so it's not exactly the best bullet material, but it's the best we got. It just means that it'll have to be propelled out particularly fast. The biggest issue standing in our way is sublimation, it turning from solid to gas. This will happen pretty quickly, but it shouldn't be fast enough to make the bullets be completely useless if we do these two things. One, make the bullet a little bigger than it needs to be, and two, don't use gunpowder explosions as propellant. Using compressed gas will solve that problem, and it'll avoid the problem of not having an unlimited explosive to shoot out that will make the gun overheat but we still need a source of energy to create a low pressure vacuum to suck the air in, a freezer to cool the nitrogen down, and an air compressor running continuously. The answer? Solar power. Just have the gun and even a backpack hooked up or something covered in solar cells. Within the next few hundred years, solar technology will greatly improve. Right now we can make about 1,584 joules of energy per one meter squared solar panel per year in a nice spot like Kansas. This is with an assumed 20% efficiency, but we can bump that up to 60% or so in this theoretical world we've created that's supposed to be real life and definitely is. Solar cells do vary a lot depending on climate and time of day of course, but with an efficiency of 60% we should expect about 5,000 megajoules per year. Is this enough to power the gun and all its components? Let's find out. Well, it was tough to find the numbers, but I think I got the closest I could to accurate data. The bullet maker, the solid air making thingy, would use up 30.6 megajoules per 1 liter of liquid. To turn this solid, the final number is then about 42 megajoules per liter of solid air. Doing the math, it was surprisingly hard to find volumes per bullet, but using the measurements for a 9mm parabellum and some estimation, I came to a volume of 7,402 millimeters cubed. This means that 42 megajoules can make 135 and 1 tenths of a bullet. 
This means our Infinity-ish pistol will use up 2.8 megajoules per second, assuming the rest of the components use up about 18 megajoules per hour to continuously function. This number I got by assuming a 1 horsepower air compressor. This means we could run the gun continuously firing using just one 1 meter solar panel out in the sun with no reloading or anything like that at all, assuming fairly incorrectly that the panel contains its 5000 megajoules of sun juice right off the bat, which it totally doesn't, but whatever. Then the gun will shoot for 29 minutes and 46 seconds. Crap. Looks like one solar panel just isn't enough to run it continuously. But what if you had an entire row of them somewhere providing lots of power and you use a contraption like a wireless cell phone charger, which uses inductive coupling magnet magic. You don't really need to know how that works. To produce wireless power transfer. This is the near field method and it works well for phones sitting on blocks and stuff like that but we don't want to have to put down our pistol to charge it. We need a far field technique, which uses EM waves like microwaves to beam energy to the receiver, but it does have to be aimed. Yes, this will limit our range quite a bit, but that's the price you pay if you don't want to have to lug around a bunch of solar panels. But there's now this tricky part about not cooking the shooter alive. Honestly, I can't see a great way around this, unless we assume future technology will advance to give great directional control of the waves. There will always be the Rayleigh criterion to have to deal with, which says that the microwaves and similar EM waves will diffuse with the distance, sort of like how a shotgun blast spreads out. Range will take a hit, but it's better than becoming a nice microwave meal for the skag plebs. There's two more problems though. How is all that supposed to fit into a pistol? The answer? Engineers will figure it out. If we allow a theoretical advancement in technology, we can assume that in the future all the components we need will have gotten much smaller. I mean, computers used to be room-sized, now they fit in the paw of your hand. The other problem is that all these components will eventually deteriorate, probably within 5 to 10 years, at least with our current technology. There's really no way around this except, again, assuming engineering will figure it out. Entropy is just a fundamental part of nature. Things fall apart, so let's just assume that the gun won't fall apart for a thousand years. Okay, we have our infinity-ish pistol. What good is it though? Can it take out a human or even a cockroach? How deadly would a solid nitrogen bullet be? Since nothing like that has really been made before, I'm gonna have to do a lot of estimation. The Infinity Pistol, as with most machine pistols in game, shoots at 124 miles per hour. If the bullet has a volume of a 9mm parabellum round, that means it has a mass of 7.6 grams, so it would have 8.6 foot-pounds of energy on impact. That's not a lot. Typically, to kill a deer, you need 1,000 foot-pounds, but since 124 miles per hour muzzle velocity is very low for the real world, we can take a typical number for a 9mm muzzle velocity of 850 miles per hour and just calculate with that. With this more realistic muzzle velocity, the bullet does 404.7 foot-pounds. Considering the Infinity Pistol doesn't have very high damage in game, this number seems pretty good. It won't be one-shotting anything, but it'll take stuff out eventually and it's got the fire rate and magazine capacity to do it. It's sort of like a hundred babies continuously punching the rock until he's turned into a bloody pulp. Just like that. But what about that limbness gate? Well, recoil is simply a byproduct of Newton's third law of motion, the one about equal and opposite reactions, you know the one. So when gases from the gun used to propel the projectile are released, they can be redirected by a device known as a muzzle brake to reduce recoil anywhere from 10 to 50%. I see no reason why a muzzle brake couldn't be connected to a computer chip that would know which direction to direct the gases to achieve the desired recoil pattern of an infinity sign. Would it technically be false advertising to have that sign since it doesn't technically shoot forever? Yes. But who cares, right? Vladov already lied to you. I can too. Hooray! We made an infinity pistol! Well, sort of. I'll see you at the end of the universe.